Hello, hello! We have another Natasha Denona palette. This is the Retro Glam palette. As you can tell from the outside, what we have here is a palette with some greens and some pinks. Now, once again, um, I, I did not wait for this video or for me to use it to just completely redo everything inside. So what you're going to see is in, inside is my preference of the way I wanted to fix up this palette. So if you look at pictures of this palette and what it looks like inside, you're going to get a completely different color story because I have rearranged this palette in the way that I want it to be rearranged. So here's the packaging. Again, all the ingredients listed here with the um, the shade names in here. This product, from what I can immediately see in the ingredients, does uh, have carmine in it, so it's not uh, it's not vegan. If that's important to you, just know this is not vegan. Um, I was really interested in this palette because I don't think I've ever seen a color story like this before. I, it really caught my eye, and apart from that, I love mint greens. Mint greens are so pretty to me. So I was very interested. And this is the outside. I think by this point, many of us have seen what this palette looks like. And the inside, especially we've seen the dupe from Alter Ego. There's a dupe from Alter Ego that I was going back and forth on on what should I should get. Here are the pinholes so you can push out the magnetic pans inside and rearrange it how you like. There is a mirror in here, a nice big mirror, thankfully it's frosted for me, but I got this palette last year during Black Friday, I got this palette for $34.50. Not bad, freaking amazing for an Natasha Denona palette. Now to the actual review of the palette, I really don't know what to say, other than um, I guess I'm kind of disappointed with what I got from this palette. So this is my arrangement as to how these colors made sense to me. We have the pink shades in the middle, the mint green shades on the side, and then we have like these cool browns over here. Cool gray, cool browns. <sighs> what is this, the brown in the... These are like more like grays, like dark grays. It's very interesting how the camera is reading them as browns, but to me, in person, these look like grays. This one definitely is... I don't know, actually. This is like a gray-brown. These two definitely look gray. These look like gray-browns. I was just pretty much just disappointed with this side. I very much like the greens. I thought the greens were pretty, but even the greens I wasn't completely in love with. I thought they were okay. I think they, they made the look I wanted, but I wasn't really in love with the look. And I've kind of been up in the air for the past couple days trying to figure out how I really feel about this palette. I even started watching other people's reviews on this palette to see what they were saying um, and they really honestly weren't saying much. Um, it kind of felt like a... I don't want to say butt kissing but they instead of saying the things they liked they preferred just not to say anything because I think there were more things that they did not like and that just that's just for the, some of the videos that I watched. Um, some insightfulness that I did get from other people's reviews was that this is kind of for some, some of the gals who tried this palette, they were saying it reminds me of like a, like a spring palette. That it's very kind of, these pale baby colors are just giving, you know, pastels. And it's very much a, like a different version of a pastel palette. And with that insightfulness, I feel like maybe that's partly why I don't fully like the palette. Because it's partly the formula that I don't like in here, but it's also just partly all the shades on once applied on my eye, like say for this, this um, column right here, once applied on my eye, it completely just all looked like the same block of color. It, there was just not really any other like difference. It just looked like all the same thing with this column and this column. There was just nothing popping. Again, it was just like it looked like a blocked out color. There was no shading. There was no depth. There was no super sparkle. This is only the third. Natasha Denona palette I've ever tried. The first palette I ever tried was Metropolis, which is their most expensive palette. No, not, that's not true. It's not her most expensive palette. She has a, like a 200 and something dollar palette, but it's one of her most expensive. I believe I got that palette for $128. It's expensive. And that was the first Natasha Denona palette I ever tried, and I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. This is exactly what everyone has said, right? I just tried the Yucca palette. I really like that palette. The shimmers in there are so good. They're so nice. I really appreciate a high-end yellow palette. Now that I'm working on this, I'm like, oh no. And I can see now why this palette isn't one of the more popular Natasha Denona palettes. 
because it's not just the color story. I feel like the formula is not all there either. So we have like a shade like this, which it's pretty, but it's kind of slightly panned a little bit, but not too much. It's all right. It, it provides some shimmer, but honestly, it looks a lot more intense on my hand than it does on my eye. They picked up okay with the brush. I even dipped my fingers in it. And it still just doesn't, it just doesn't look as best as I think it could be. You have shades like this, where I try to do something with it and it just ends up, can you even see that? It kind of ends up disappearing. Even like this, like black brown, isn't as intense as I was hoping it would be on my eye and it really didn't create as much depth as I wanted. So it's just such a bummer that this on my eyes just did not apply the way that I wanted. There's a shade like this and it kind of reminds me of, um, what is it, Boyfriend's Purse and like the mini controversy palette. This color just on my eyes is so lackluster. It just, it's just more of a sheen. It's kind of like soft makeup. You have shades like this, like these two shades in the pan. Let's see, the two pink shades in the pan look different. On um, swatched on my hand look different. On my eyes specifically, looked exactly the same on my eyes. It, there's like a weird kind of almost like oxidation that happens, and I think it's because it's like a um, is it liquid to matte, cream to matte kind of shade. It just looks really weird on me, personally, so I just, I'm not digging this, I'm not digging this whole section. Um, these were pretty alright, I wish there was a darker green, because that's not, this one was more sheer, it wasn't the kind of color I like, it's more of like a metallic-y green, so it didn't really add any depth. And then we have a shade like this, ooh, this one's so nice, it feels so good, it is so soft. Can definitely feel that creamy formula. You have a shade like this. This is as deep as I could have made my my look and I prefer something that's a little bit deeper. Um, I think I really liked these matte shades the most. Belle and Marlene I think were pretty nice. But it's still it's still not my like favorite kind of mint formula. I feel like I have other palettes with mint shades in them that I like so much more. The mints in here were okay. They're pretty decent. They were alright, but they really weren't something to brag about, to be honest. Um, I'm also- I watched one video where- oh man, who was it? I think it's this YouTuber called like Steph Loves Makeup or Steph's Makeup Stash or something like that. If, I'm trying to remember, I'm sorry, her YouTuber name, but she had done this comparison of this Natasha Denona palette versus some other kind of eyeshadow collection. It was called like, um, it was I think like a, In Memory of Mel, which I guess there was this YouTuber named Mel who has passed and there was a makeup collection in dedication to her. And after I had seen that collection before, but I hadn't really thought anything about it. And it's because they give you, they just give you the loose shades and you have to buy a palette, a Z palette, a magnetic palette and put them together yourself. So I didn't really have the vision to see what it looked like. But after she compared that palette to this palette, I can, I'm definitely with her when she says that she would prefer this kind of, um, the, pa the Mel palette, the Mel palette, because it has deeper shades in there. Cause these look like deeper shades. But they're really not. They end up being more metallic-y. They're really not as dark on the eye as we see here. And they kind of just end up blending in with each other. So, I mean, overall, I'm kind of in the air about this. I think if I'm going to steal any shades, it's going to be a couple, maybe three or four from this little mint side over here. Everything else is going to stay in there. But we'll see. I'm working on another Natasha Denona palette. I'm not sure how I'm going to like it. I may end up repanning everything and putting the shades I don't like into one of the palettes. I don't know what's going to go into what, but <laughs> we'll see how that goes because this is just, I'm, I'm quite disappointed. I was really happy with the Metropolis palette. I was really happy with the Yucca palette. The 
these shimmers in the yucca palette oh my god they're exactly what i love and this just falls so much more sheer and subtle and maybe it's just not my vibe maybe it's just because i don't really wear or prefer pastels too very often maybe it's the wrong time of year to wear it I'm, we're in the summer i don't know but it feels like it's not just the color story it's also it's also the formula and i feel like even that's why this palette came out what like two or three years ago and I just got this palette last Black Friday for $34.50. Natasha Denona palettes usually don't go down that far down in price. I feel like if you see a Natasha Denona palette on sale, it's usually only 30% off and that's as low as you can get. But a palette like this usually sells for like $69, I think. And I got it for like I got it for like $34. So I feel like that kind of shows that this also isn't her audience's preference either. But let me know what you think. Like, do you think I'm missing something? I really do like the the outside, this kind of swooshy little figure. I love this ombre effect from the mint to the pink. I really do. I, I'm interested in the color story. And I wish that it looked as good on my eyes as it does here on my hand. But um, I think if you're thinking about this palette, maybe you're not missing out as much as you think you are. But you'll have a great day.